I think it's the time that we've got to start to think about something beyond food security. Food security is a fantastic thing that we, we can think about, but so many things are changing in the world. We've got the issues of climate change, we've got, we've got the issues about do we really want to look after all of the animals? Do we need to look after all of the people who work in the food supply system? So I, I think in terms of integrity, it's actually a much bigger topic than food security. So I'm really trying to convince many of the stakeholders across the world to think more about integrity in terms of how we deliver a food system for the future. We as consumers quite adore technology, if it's about our smartphone, if it's about uh, faster cars and all sorts of different things, but when it comes to technology and food, we get very nervous about it. And I guess that's because, well, it's something that we consume, but actually we consume pharmaceuticals and that's very technology driven. So I think we, we've got to separate about some of the myths about technology and food, about Frankenstein foods, and really think about what is the benefit of technology in terms of making our food safer, making it more sustainable, making it more nutritious. We don't have to say that we accept GM or that we dislike GM. Let's just take it on a case-by-case -case basis, look at the science, look at the evidence, and then make sure that we convince people it's the right thing to do for all of our sakes. In many ways, the EU has really driven food safety standards across the world. And that's been very much about convincing the European consumer that we've got safe food and also about stimulating world trade. And I think that's been fantastic. But we also in Europe have very much this precautionary principle. If we can't be absolutely sure something's safe, we don't use it. And I think we're, we're missing so many advantages because Technology is changing across the world and we've got to be careful in Europe that we don't become actually food insecure because we're not willing to accept things that are scientifically proven to be safe. And I think things like gene editing are very safe and, and we've got to convince consumers it's the right thing to do. I think I, I like to think about two things. There is the hard scientific evidence, but there's also the social sciences about how can you instill trust in people absolutely to give the truth, to give the right messages. And then what we do is we all then try to make our decisions. I'm not saying that all food in Europe should be GM modified. I think there should be an opportunity to produce GM food to inform people. And then as consumers, we can make that decision ourselves, what we buy and what we don't. So the, the whole concept of laboratory-based meat, it's quite topical at the moment. I think it's been very much overhyped personally. Um, I see multiple issues with it going forward. I wonder about the nutritional quality of the meat that's going to be produced. I really wonder about what's the true environmental impact of that, the, the use of energy. Will it be as safe as conventional meat? I, I tend to be a little bit sceptical about the future of lab-based meat. I think what we've got to do is really think about how we produce good quality, safe, sustainable meat going forward. That's a much better way forward for our planet. We hear many statistics about the environmental footprint of how food is being produced, plant-based food and animal-based food. I, I, I read articles every day and they're, they're totally contradict one another. So I think we really need to know what's the carbon footprint, what's the water footprint, what's the impact of biodiversity, what's the impact on our nutrition, on our micronutrition. That's how we should make decisions about what we eat going forward. Let's not be ruled by doctrine or dogma. We've become 
incredibly interested in this concept of cold plasma at my, my university in Belfast. In fact, we're developing a cold plasma center for agriculture and food. So it's a way that we can decontaminate food, the surface of food, be it contaminated with microorganisms or chemicals. It's a very, very safe way to do it. It's just by actually putting a little bit of energy into air streams or energy into water. And what it does, it disrupts those hazardous materials on the surface of foodstuffs. Very, very safe. I think it's one of the big technology futures that we have for ensuring not only food is safer, but increasing the shelf life, which in turn reduces food waste. Cold plasma is something still in its infancy in terms of can we roll it out into industry. So we've got a multitude of different pilot projects now, working with fresh produce, working with meat, really trying to find what are the right applications for it, and then how do we scale up the technology that will be cost effective in terms of delivering safer food and food with this longer shelf life. I spend a lot of time looking at fraud in our global food supply system and there are no food commodities, no food ingredients that are free from fraud. And we think about our, our world food system is worth trillions of, of, of dollars every year so of course there are going to be, be people who are going to cheat. What worries me and, and there's, there's a growing concern that more and more organised crime is getting involved in fraud in our food system. So much money to be made, the chances of being caught are quite slim and if you are caught the penalties are trivial. So what we've got to do is really think about on a global basis how we're going to stop cheats in our food system. I guess in terms of how we deal with fraud on a global basis, the first thing is we've got to deter it, then we've got to detect it, and then we've got to deal with it when we find it. So a lot of the deterrents are about much more visibility and transparency of supply chains, a lot more checking about what people are doing, and then if somebody is caught, we've really got the penalty to meet the, the crime itself. This is massive amounts of money people are making and taking huge risks with the well-being of many people and, and it worries me, particularly young children who, who get impacted by food fraud. So I, I would be in favour of some pretty draconian penalties in terms of, of if somebody is caught cheating in our food system. In terms of who, who's responsible for stopping fraud happening, and often governments will say that's the responsibility of industry and industry say it's the responsibility of governments. Do you know what? It's the responsibility of both, both working together. Having a, a coherent program of checking and detecting, sharing information amongst each other, that's what will really keep the bad guys out of our food system. I mean, GFSI is a wonderful organisation. It really is the coalition of the good coming to think about how we make our food system safer. Fantastic. It has all of the connectivity between businesses, between governments. So it has a massive role, a massive role in how do we roll out these technologies, these things about the digitization of supply chains, better auditing, better inspection, more testing. What a wonderful organization to take the leadership role in making our food system more safe and more secure. Blockchain is a, is, a, is a wonderful thing. I've been hearing about blockchain for many years. We've, we've been running a number of projects on blockchain. And then what we've got to do is to separate out the truth from the hype. Blockchain is a nice way of digitizing supply chains. But you've got to be careful that the information that goes into those digital systems is accurate and correct. I'm not sure that people really understand that yet. There's more to having a transparent, safe, secure supply chain than just using blockchain.